but it could not shake our resolve while battleships smoldered, patriots across our country enlisted in our armed forces, volunteering to take up the fight for freedom and security for which their brothers and sisters made the ultimate sacrifice. On National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, we pay tribute to the souls of lost 74 years ago. We salute those who responded with strength and courage and service of our nation. And we renew our dedication to the ideals for which they so valiantly fought. Today, with solemn gratitude, we recall the sacrifice of all who served during World War II, especially those who gave the last full measure of devotion and the families they left behind. A proud heirs to the freedom and progress secured by those who came before us, we pledge to uphold their legacy and honor their memory. Ladies and gentlemen, please introduce the official party for today's ceremony. Our keynote speaker is Rear Admiral Craig Fowler. Admiral Fowler is Chief of Logistical Affairs for the Secretary of the Army. Admiral Fowler. The Superintendent of the National Mall and Memorial Parks, National Park Service, Ms. Gay Vitsky. The Chairman of the Board for Friends of the National World War II Memorial, Mr. Josiah Bunting III. From the Military District of Washington, Chaplain Commander Michael Pumphrey, who we just heard from. And finally, our honored host for today's event is General P.X. Kelly, United States Marine Corps, retired and former Commandant of the United States Marine Corps. He was a vital part in building this memorial. General Kelly. <clears throat> it is now my privilege to introduce the Superintendent of National Mall and Memorial Parks, National Park Service, Ms. Gay Vitsky. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the National Park Service, it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to the National World War II Memorial for the commemoration of the 74th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. We gather today to remember and honor the nearly 2,400 individuals who died on December 7, 1941, the opening chapter of a war in which more than 400,000 American servicemen and women would make the supreme sacrifice. As we begin the ceremony, I would like to recognize a number of folks in our audience today. We have uh, nearly 20 World War II veterans who are with us today and uh, who will be part of, yes. They will be part of presenting the wreaths on the Freedom Wall at the conclusion of the ceremony. Um, this veterans group includes Mr. Frank Levinston of Lake Charles, Louisiana, who uh, at 110 years young, we believe is the oldest living World War II veteran. We have with us Pearl Harbor survivor and Normandy invasion veteran Dale Red Robinson of Wise County, Texas. And the World War II veterans visiting today, courtesy of the Honor Flight DFW from the great state of Texas. Welcome to all of you. Welcome today, but welcome to your memorial. Uh, your presence today reminds us not only of this solemn chapter in American history, but it also inspires us by the great courage, resolve, and commitment of the fighting men and women of World War II um, that helped define the nation as we know it today. I would also like to uh, acknowledge Mr. Josiah Bunting, um, chairman of the Friends of the National World War II Memorial and our partner in the care of this memorial and uh, of course, co-sponsor of the events this afternoon.
will be here sharing your stories when your grandchildren's grandchildren are visiting this memorial. Uh, so again, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Gay, very much. Please rise, this is Hamilton and M-O-O-W-W. And we also have a very special group of Americans who are with us here today who willingly, willingly give of their time and their money and their effort to ensure our World War II veterans receive the proper recognition and thanks that they so rightly deserve. And it's all the way to, who's with us today all the way from the great state of Texas is Honor Flight Dallas-Fort Worth under the guidance and direction of Ms. Melanie Tutti Giordana. And the chairman of the honor flight for Austin uh, is Mr. Alan Bergeron. Will those folks please stand? The honor flights. I think we got a whole row right there in the red shirts. Without them, these World War II veterans would not be able to see their memorial. We want to thank you. <clears throat> we also are blessed to have some of the greatest professional teams in the Washington, D.C. area. Not only are they professional on the field, is but what impresses me the most, they're professional off the field, too, and what they do for their community and their city. We have with us today a true professional in every way. Representing the Washington Redskins here today is Mr. Bruce Allen, president of the team and his representatives, uh, and also representatives of USAA, the official military appreciation sponsor of the NFL. Will all you please folks please rise to be thanked. Washington Redskins and USAA, thank you. How ironic, we have today with us a flight from Texas as they play the Washington Redskins tonight. And I just want to remind you another great thing that the Redskins are doing, they're honoring Pearl Harbor tonight as part of their ceremonies. I think that's a first class act, and thank you, Mr. President. And finally, it's not every day that you get to meet the oldest World War II veteran in the United States. All the way from Louisiana, 110 years young, and when asked what his hobbies were, his hobby is reading the, the uh, stock market every day. He reads the stock market every day. That's how he st remains so sharp. Maybe I start doing that, maybe I'll maybe reach 90, I don't know. But we have with us today uh, 110 years, Mr. Frank Levingston. Right there. God bless you. Okay, it's now my honor to introduce the chairman of the board for Friends of the National World War II Memorial, Mr. Josiah Bunting. I join all of us in the official party in welcoming you on this great occasion. The great American historian and biographer of a great soldier, Stephen Ambrose, once said that when he looked at the World War II generation, he was struck by how many members of that great generation had become teachers, teachers of one kind or another, grammar schools, high schools, universities. Teachers who, among other things, brought 
the wealth of experience in fighting for their country to the classroom and the understanding of the terrific strains placed upon democracies that are called to go to war. As moving as these ceremonies of remembrance are for all of us, what we need to do, it seems to me at this time in our American history, is translate the things that move us into active evangelism in behalf of our love and admiration for the World War II generation so that succeeding generations, as Mr. Churchill called them, do not lose touch with what they have bequeathed to us. So it seems to me our most earnest prayer on this day of thanksgiving for what we have been given is to commit ourselves to assure that our schools and colleges and all who teach do not shirk their duty to pass the vigorous and unceasing remembrance and inspiration of what we owe that great, great generation, particularly those with us here today. God bless our country and God bless all of you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate those remarks. We always have with us uh, one of the band we have today one of the premier bands, the best bands that we have in the, our nation's capital, the Navy Ceremonial Band. They are mar marvelous, and we are so proud to have them with us here today. And they're going to play a special tribute to our World War II veterans. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Navy Ceremonial Band. Let's hear it for them. It's now my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker for today's event. Rear Admiral Craig Fowler has bet him, uh, served our country honorably for more than 30 years. A 1983 graduate of the United States Naval Academy and a native of Freiburg, Pennsylvania, he deployed to the Arabian Gulf and participated in maritime interception operations in support of the United Nations sanctions against Iraq. He assisted victims of the devastating tsunami off Indonesia and deployed to the Middle East supporting Operations New Dawn in Iraq and Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. In June 2014, Admiral Fowler 
assumed the duty of Chief of Legislative Affairs for the Secretary of the Navy. We are not honored to have him here, but before I inter officially introduce him, uh, I was going to say we met in a bar, but we really didn't. We met at reception at Capitol Hill, and uh, I was thinking of Pearl Harbor, and I said, what better to have an admiral, it was such a decorated admiral, to be our keynote speaker than Admiral Fowler? And he graciously accepted, and which I am very grateful for. So, Admiral Fowler, come and talk to us. Thank you. We are honored by the presence of our veterans. And that band and that song, thinking about our country, and you are our veterans. And I want you to stay seated. I want everybody else on your feet and an ovation for our veterans. As the superintendent said, thank you. Thank you is what today is all about. Thank you in remembering. Now behind me we have the Pacific and the Atlantic. And I want everyone here to imagine that you are in the worst storm ever. The worst. Rain driving sideways, crushing your umbrella. That rain, it stings, it hurts. It's hard to walk. You can't hear the simultaneous crash of thunder and flash of lightning adds to the confusion. Maybe you were prepared for this storm. Maybe you weren't. However violent, you probably think it's just a storm. I'm going to look up somewhere, see a patch of light, and this will end. Now imagine what our veterans went through. It wasn't rain, it was torrents of bullets being shot by an unseen and unexpected enemy. Explosions, flashes of muzzle fire, bursts of bombs, the horror, the smells, the agony of war. No end in sight, no bright light on the horizon. At times there probably seemed to them like little hope. It's not a bad dream, it's a nightmare. It's not a scene from Saving Private Ryan or Unbroken. It's the reality of what our veterans faced. And they conquered it. They turned chaos into courage. Confusion into teamwork and triumph. They united our nation and they saved the world. Today, we are honored to be with them. Now think about Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941. Until a few minutes ago, when the skies were blue, it probably dawned like that, like just about every day in Hawaii. Breeze off the water, the forecast was partly cloudy in the afternoon with maybe a hint of rain, and then the serenity was broken by the horror of the worst storm ever. The roar of planes, explosions, and the cries of chaos and agony. For most of us, we can't imagine it. No storm comparison gives it justice. Not a bit. We only read about it in history books and imagine the smell, the sound, the horror. We're only left to imagine those stories that were never told by those who lost their life that day. The letters home never finished, the deck watches never stood, and the homecoming never celebrated. For those 2,403 Americans who died that day and the over 1,000 who were wounded, there were eight battleships in port named after states in this great nation. All of them were sunk or damaged. The California, the Maryland, the Nevada, the Oklahoma, the Pennsylvania, the Tennessee, the West Virginia, and finally the Arizona, who still serves as, uh, us today as a reminder of those that were lost. Today is about remembering and thanks 
and I'd like to recognize just a few of the heroes that are here today. We have two Pearl Harbor survivors. Oddly, neither Navy, Staff Sergeant Dale Red Robinson, and Command Sergeant Major Edward Davis. And then, of course, as always been re already been recognized, Mr. Livingston. When you read about each of these veterans, one thing common comes out. It's their sense of humor and their spirit. And you inspire all of us today. I would also like to acknowledge those that aren't here, that went before us. Many, many stories. I'll cite one. Chief Boson mate Edwin Joseph Hill. During the height of the bombing, the chief did what all good chief petty officers of the United States Navy do. He led his sailors and led them to safety. And then he jumped back into the water and swam back out to the USS Nevada to continue to do what he could. When he got aboard, there was an explosion and he lost his life. And he received the Congressional Medal of Honor for that distinguished conduct. Just one example of the bravery and the heroism of our World War II vets. It's our solemn obligation, all of us, to remember that fateful day and hold it close. It's a pivotal point in our nation's history. We need to remember and thank those that served, their families, and those that sacrificed all. Today's military lives on through your legacy, your bravery and courage. It has not been forgotten and you remain an inspiration to us and future generations of service women and men. While we imagine the chaos of that day, we live all of us today with the prosperity and the security built on the shoulders of these heroes. Built on the shoulders of these heroes. Heroes who set the example for others with a standard of excellence, teamwork, and commitment second to none. Our challenge as we face the uncertainty and complexity associated with today's threats is to live up to the example of our World War II veterans and families. I think Mr. Bunning said that best. Like then, today's challenges will be overcome by the teamwork, unity, and power of the American people. Backed by the best military in the world. It's been an honor to represent the women and men of the United States military today. We will live up to the example of the heroes that are here with us today. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Admiral Fowler, so very much for those great remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for our official wreath laying ceremony at the Freedom Wall, which will take place be behind us. Please remain in your seats while the official party and the wreath layers get positioned. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, we will now commence the reef presentations. Representing the United States of America is Admiral Craig S. Fowler and the oldest American World War II veteran still alive, Mr. Frank Levingston. Representing the National Park Service is Meg, Mrs. Gay Vietsky, Superintendent of the National Mall and Memorial Parks, accompanied by World War II veterans, Mrs. Esther Spring and Command Sergeant Major Edward Davis, who was a survivor of Pearl Harbor. Representing Friends of the National World War II Memorial is Mr. Josiah Bunting III, the Chairman of the Board of Directors. He is accompanied by World War II veterans, Mr. Ted Waller and Mr. Dale Doc Nelson. Representing the United States Army is Colonel Jason A. Altieri, United States Army, and World War II veterans, Mr. Albert Binko and Mr. Dale Robinson, who is a Pearl Harbor survivor. Representing the United States Marine Corps is the former Commandant of the United States Marine Corps, General P.X. Kelly. He is accompanied by World War II Marine Corps veteran, Mr. Ed Graham. Representing the United States Navy is Force Master Chief Ronnie A. Wright, United States Navy retired and representative for USAA, 
and World War II veteran, Mr. Laura Mays. Representing the United States Air Force is the president of the Washington Redskins professional football team, Mr. Bruce Allen. He is accompanied by World War II veterans, Mr. Herb Durham and Mr. Joe Geary. Representing the United States Coast Guard is Mr. Harold Abington and Mr. Harry Miller. Representing the United States Maritime Administration are Mr. Eldon Swope and Mr. Robert Eccles. Representing the Military Order of World Wars is the National Commander, Ruth L. Hamilton, and World War II veteran, Mr. Alfred Sheheb.
presenting the wreath for AMVETS, the American veterans, keepers of the Arizona Memorial Shrine Room Wall, is National Commander Jim Pigeon and Ladies Auxiliary National President Catherine Burning. They are now accompanied by World War II veteran Mr. Curtis Smith. Our final wreath today, presented it today, is by the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution, the DAR. It is being presented by the National President General of the DAR, Mrs. Lynn Young, and Associate Mrs. Judy Chafin. She's accompanied by World War II veteran, Mr. Fred Solotuk. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of taps. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have the special honor of playing our service songs. If you are presently serving or you have served in this branch of the service, once you hear your song, we'd like you to stand to be recognized. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Navy Ceremonial Band. <laughs> The United States Army. United States Air Force. United States Marine Corps. United States Coast Guard. The United 
United States Navy.